Hi everybody, I'm Tami Gubeni. What a time, what a season when the world is just faced with one global calamity, one common enemy, an unseen enemy. Now, I know a lot of you probably have gone into some sort of meditation, uh, some sort of prayer session, seeking the face of the Lord. And oftentimes when we pray, it's always us directing our requests to God. It's always us pleading to the Father, asking Him to intervene in our situations. But I was just wondering, what if... Just for once, instead of us directing our desires to the Lord, we actually just sat in a sacred space in communion with Him and asked Him, Father, what are you saying? What do you want from me? What direction do you want to send me in? I think only then, when we are in a point and in a space of listening, are we able to really hear. So instead of being proactive and directing our desires and our will to the Lord, let us truly come into his presence, come into his space with the utmost humility and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Speak a word into my life. Speak a sense of direction into the season that my life is in. Because ultimately, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, Jesus the Christ taught us to say, Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How about we ask God, what is your will, Father, for my life? What would you like me to do? Where would you like me to go? What are you wanting me to hear and understand? And and when we put ourselves in that sacred space, we are able to hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit, that, that still small voice that will say, yes, no, sit, stand, move, not now, later. That's when we truly get to take direction from the Lord. So if you could join me in the psalm that we're going to pray today. And this is the psalm where we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, where we invite God to be our strength, to be our lead, to be our compass, to be our cornerstone and to be our direction so that his will may be accomplished in our lives where we are truly surrendering our own will and we are surrendering it to him his agents, his feet here on earth, his mouthpiece to his people, his eyes, his ears, his being, so that when you move, he moves, so that when you speak, he speaks, so that when you touch, he touches. What a marvel that would be. And is that not the will of God through us, his creation, to live through us, to express through us. For how does one know God if you are not going to go and preach him? How does one have an encounter with God unless they meet somebody who introduces him to the Lord? Here's the psalm. I absolutely adore it. And it's Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you, O God, I trust Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and your love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore He instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, 
though it is great. Who, then, is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all of my sins. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, my Lord, is in you. Redeem me, O God, from all of my troubles. That's Psalm 25. A psalm just calling out to God for his protection, calling out to God for his guidance, calling out to God for him to be sovereign in our lives, for him to lead us, to protect us and to guide us because ultimately it is his will that needs to prevail and be dominant in our lives as opposed to ours. I must say though that it does take a dying to self. It does take a deep level of humility of acknowledging that Father, I don't know it all. Father, I cannot do it all. I've tried. I've tried and, and look at where I am. I need you. I don't have all the answers. I've, I've tried to direct myself. I've tried to plan my own life. I've, I've tried to do things my own from my own intelligence, my own connections, whatever the case may be. But when we prostrate ourselves before the Lord and strip ourselves naked of all of these preconceived ideas, then we are allowing the Holy Spirit to truly move. And, and what a marvel it would be. What a marvel it would be if we could just open ourselves up and allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, that we may be directed and led in every single thing that we do. That day can be this day if you choose to open up and allow the Lord to lead you and to guide you. It doesn't even have to be a process that takes forever because all that the Lord looks at is your heart. He looks at the sincerity of, of, your, of, your, of your utterings and the sincerity of your spirit. He says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if you've been carrying this baggage for the longest of times and you are ready just to let it go, you are ready just to surrender. You are ready to say, Lord, I've tried it all. I have tried them all. And now I'm coming to you. At that point of surrender, that is where our Lord meets us, which is oftentimes why when we are ready to just throw in the gauntlet, when we are ready to just give up, and then it's like suddenly things happen. Why? Not because the Lord was waiting for you to, to fail, all he was waiting for was for you to acknowledge who he is in his life. Acknowledge that your powers will only take you to this point and no further. And that in order for you to really cross over to the other side, that he is an essential part. Not only is he an essential part, he is that very boat that will take you from this side of the shore to the other. He is the medium for your crossover. And when we are ready to say, I'm not going to try and swim through the stormy waters on my own anymore. No, here's a boat with oars. I'm going to get into this boat and allow him to steer me to the other side where there is peace and wholeness, understanding, healing, and his presence abides. May the God of love, the God of justice, the God of peace, the God who wants nothing more than all of you, be your strength and be your comfort during these times. God bless you. I've delivered from my enemies till all my fears have come.